Welcome back to the channel, everybody. So, in today's video, we're going to be cleaning up all of the limb casts and some of the petrified wood that we collected up at Saddle Mountain. Uh, it was a great time. I'll drop a link down below to that video and up above. Go check it out. It was quite, quite awesome. There's a lot of different ways that you can go about cleaning up this material. I'm going to show you what I have found to be the very, very best. And, and yeah, let's look at the limb casts. This is the material that I'm going to be uh, cleaning today. I'm very curious to see if this is uh, has a blue hue to it when, once it's cleaned, like that blue limb cast, which we'll show that here at the end. Uh, we have a lot of uh, calcium carbonates on this. You can kind of see that it's kind of, well, it's just that crusty white stuff. We can preview a little bit of what we want to clean off with the black light. Already, though, I've thrown this stuff in a bucket of water, just hot water, to let it soak. Get any of the really loose things off, like, you know, your sands and just loose dirts. Um, and then what's left is going to be more, more stubborn. So uh, let me show you what that looks like with the black light, though. So for this demonstration here, I'm going to be using my UV Beast 365 nanometer light. Um, it's filtered. And uh, I'll show you what we're hoping to remove here. And you can see a portion of this glows. Now, a lot of this is phosphorescent. So my UV light is exciting the electrons and you're watching them slowly drop down into orbit. And all of this stuff that you're seeing glow green or kind of a very bright white, I'm hoping to uh, dissolve off. And I actually have an orange piece here. <laughs> so yeah. No, uh, no reaction there from that, but that's just a, that doesn't matter. We're not concerned about that. We want to get all of this crud off. So we've already determined what it is we have here. Um, we have, you know, petrified wood that is agatized or opalized, and that is silica based. So very hard to dissolve with an acid, uh, it's doable, but we're not <laughs> not doing that. Uh, the stuff we want to remove is a calcium carbonate, which is very easy to dissolve. And there's a, a number of different acids that would dissolve it. Like a good example would be a hydrochloric acid. Okay, um, Most people probably don't have straight hydrochloric acid. Uh, you might have some muriatic acid, which is basically hydrochloric acid with some other stuff added. Uh, it does work. You do start to get into some problems with uh, having to like neutralize your acids and how are you disposing of it and just, you know, 100% hydro hydrochloric acid is something that you need to be careful with, okay? Um, so most people go to distilled white vinegar. Now distilled white vinegar is 5% acetic acid, like this jug right here, diluted with water, 5% acid strength, okay? I'm filming this in March 2022. Uh, the cheapest that I find this one gallon jug from Kroger is $3.50, which it can get expensive if you have a lot of petrified wood that you want to clean with this stuff. So the $3.50, um, which is a lot. That's a lot and it really adds up, but I have something better. So I have 45% vinegar. Okay, um, this is a much, much better value. If you take this one gallon of 45% vinegar and you uh, dilute it down to the 5%, you're looking at $2.22 a gallon versus the three fifty. dollars So, I mean, nine gallons uh, of dilute, 5% dilute for 20 bucks. Or if you're to buy the equivalent of that, that's thirty-one fifty over there. So, uh, other benefit of this, if you feel the need to, you can make it stronger. You can't really make already diluted distilled white vinegar any stronger than the five percent it comes with. So, uh, I'm going to put a link in the description box down below to uh, to this. Uh, Twenty bucks is a uh, is a great value. I mean, maybe. Man, maybe you can find cheaper distilled white vinegar than uh, $2.22 a gallon, but I sure can't. I sure can't, and uh, I like that I can dilute it to whatever rate I want. So, um, 
Next step is uh, we're going to fill up a bucket with all of that uh, petrified wood, and we're going to fill this thing up. So I have everything packed into this bucket. Here I have 114 ounces of water. I'm going to be adding 14 ounces of the 45% vinegar, and then add it in. And if I need a little bit more, I can just add, add a little bit more. But uh, these are two gallon buckets, so. And then I'll uh, give that a little mix and add it. There's almost enough to cover it. Good enough. And you can obviously see the reaction. It's foaming away. You can see that stuff kind of coming off. So I'm gonna probably just let this uh, sit here and fizz. I might actually just add a little bit more water to cover this up and uh, it'll be good enough. Probably let it sit for oh, a little over an hour or so or until I st stop seeing it uh, fizz and react. So I've seen many people express their frustration with the cleaning of the petrified wood from Saddle Mountain. Mostly in that they say, well, it's not actually getting clean. Um, the white stuff is not coming off. And I think people are just confused as to what it is exactly they're looking at. Now this is a limb cast from Saddle Mountain that has been entirely cleaned with acid. And it's been cut so that we can see, see the inside here. Not the best polish job. <laughs> I gotta fix that. Uh, the white actually has so much silica in it that you will not be dissolving it. So there's a big difference between the white on the outside of these limb casts and the calcium carbonate that you can actually dissolve off. Another thing that I've seen people complain about is that there's like scraggly bits on here and people will often recommend, oh, well, you're just not using the right acid, your acid is bad, any number of things. And what you're seeing, this is a great example of that, uh, we have a small limb cast here and what we have on the outside, you can kind of see it right there, uh, is we have opal. We have some scraggly, scraggly opal. And uh, yeah, you might be able to chisel it off, cut it off, but you're not using a mild acid like an acetic acid or even a hydrochloric acid uh, and dissolving that. And anything that would potentially dissolve this would dissolve this, and uh, that's not exactly what, what we're going for. So you can only clean this stuff uh, to a certain, certain degree, and at some point, it's just, you, that's it, right? Uh, anything that you want to remove beyond this, right, is going to require cutting and grinding. So I'm going to let that thing cook for a little while longer out there and uh, we'll clean it all up and then we can actually see what we got. Hey, I'm a little over an hour in and you can see that we're uh, still fizzing away here. Probably, uh, it's definitely calmed down some, but we'll probably uh, let it run probably two, three hours. Well, it's been a couple hours and we are all all done here. Um, kind of mucky, uh, so I'm going to just dump it off into a, a screen here and then uh, we'll get these rinsed and uh, should be good. You don't need gloves for vinegar, you know, acetic acid really, uh, but if you have any cuts on your hands, well, <laughs> you'll certainly find it. Pretty good. Now there's still some stuff that can get cleaned off. Now the fun part, blasting off any of the remaining stuff with the textile gun. Uh, I mean, if you've never seen one of these before, these things are, it's like a super powerful squirt gun. It comes out in like a almost needle form if you can't really see it well yeah it comes out in like a needle form and it'll just blast anything away uh, these are used for 
uh, like spot cleaning and, and stuff like that. So um, should be able to get this nice and clean here. Uh, you can see uh, plenty of crud just kind of blows off with it. I might have to go back in and soak some more of that piece. So I'll probably put that aside and uh, well, have at the rest of this. Any of these smaller pieces, uh, I just wear a glove. Uh, this thing does hurt if you shoot your naked hand. So uh, and I just look for any of the little loose pieces and pile them up. Look at that. That came out pretty good. So that piece might have to go back in. We probably get uh, that white right there off. Yeah, that can go back. This might be a two day clean. Like that one's really good. That's pretty good. Look at that, isn't that pretty? That'll go back in. Really starting to be able to reveal the wood in this. Look at that. Is that blue? Oh, wait. Is that broken off? I gotta put that aside. That. That one's good. Yeah, so you know, you just sort through it here. Look at that crazy thing. So this pile here is all done and good. It's clean. Uh, I'm gonna probably hit it with a little bit of soapy water and dry it out. This pile, I'm gonna reuse the vinegar that I mixed up and maybe just add a little bit to kind of refresh it and uh, we'll let this stuff go a little bit longer. Uh, maybe even until tomorrow, because some of this stuff was kind of stubborn and quite thick. So I want to get it all off, though, because, I mean, that looks bad with that, that stuff on there. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how all of these came out. There's a couple of pieces that are being a little stubborn, uh, which would look really good if that wasn't right there. <laughs> so uh, I might have to go back in for a more extended round two cleaning. But we were able to uh, clean some of the stuff up, and I did trim up some of these uh, just to have an idea as to what it is I'm looking at. Well, look at the color in this, okay? And we compare it to what is typical up there. Or like that blue piece. Now, I have no clue why this has this purple hue to it, this deep blue. Uh, but that's a very cool limb cast kind of stuck in there. I thought about trying to break it out, but uh, it's pretty attached. So, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if the indoor light really does it justice. The, looking at it outside in the sunlight is quite interesting. I've never seen anything like these two pieces. Uh, so that's fun to see something new like that. And, you know, just kind of comparing it to other other things, it's definitely a very different color, um, you know what you would typically see up there, and then what, what I found. So, uh, anyways, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope maybe you learned something about at least about my process with cleaning. You know, now I can actually see this stuff and have a better idea as to how I want to cut, cut some of it and what it would potentially look like now that it's not being hidden by all that gross uh, calcium, you know. This is another one where I'm like, ah... I really should probably clean that up, but this one might get sliced up into pieces, so that's not not that big of a deal. Um, but uh, yeah, what else? Oh, this one. This one I thought was pretty good. You can see they've got that little limb kind of going through it. That's pro definitely a full round there. So yeah, this is a, a good one, I think. Um, that could look pretty fun, especially if I polished up that. So yeah. Anyways, um... 
thanks for uh, coming by, um, hanging out with me out here in the shop, listening to what I have to say about the cleaning process. Um, if you're not already subscribed, if you see a red button down there, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, throw me a like, and uh, I will catch you guys on the next video.